Well, we're back to Colorado yet again. Again. Do we live there? <laughs> We've been doing a lot of Colorado. Yeah. But if you remember, we showed you guys that T12 restoration that they're doing at Antonito, the yeah. Rio Grande Western number 168, mm -hmm. which should be done here it pretty should. soon. Right. At any rate, as we mentioned in that show, we got over there by riding in our own little caboose on a caboose hop. Rio Grande Southern short caboose over the whole railroad is a thing with the friends of the Cumbers and Toltec. So check this out, the whole line from our own little caboose. Well, this is going to be our ride for the day. Oh, wow, look at that. It's a caboose. <laughs> it's not a Mustang, but it'll do. Um, and we're going to be riding over the Cumbers and Toltec Scenic Railroad, oh, the whole that. railroad from one end to the other. A lot of people know of the Durango Silverton, mm -hmm. but they may not know that back in the day, the uh, San Juan extension on the Denver and Rio Grande Western uh, included both of these railroads. And then in 1968, a bunch of track was torn up and all that's left now is the Durango Silverton and the Cumbers and Holtec, about 100 miles from each other on the same track. Nice. Well, while a lot of people ride the Durango Silverton, it seems the hardcore train nuts prefer the Cumbers Toltec because they have a lot more historic equipment and they're involved in restoration. We, we saw this a few days ago with the restoration of the 10-wheeler, the T12. Wow. So a lot of this is being done by a volunteer group called the Friends of the Cumbers and Toltec. And they're the ones that actually invited us to come along on the caboose hop. That was so much fun too. Oh, so amazing. What a fun, fun group. And look at the fabulous work they're doing restoring these old cars. So this benefits uh, the railroad and it sure benefits the rest of us because we have these fun, fun, historic trains to go out and screw around with. And so that's what we came here to do, was screw around riding on a caboose. This is the Antonito end of the railroad where it met up with the standard gauge. And this was always a dual gauge terminal and the friends are rebuilding it as a dual gauge terminal. These are the workhorse engines on this railroad, K36. And that's what's going to be pulling our train, not this locomotive, but one just like it. Now, I know you love cabooses. I certainly do. That one's really cute. And the cool thing here is where we're riding in the little short caboose here, it belongs to Lindsay Ashby, uh, we're actually going to have three cabooses on the train. So yeah. that <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, There's only 12 <laughs> paying passengers on this whole run, and so everybody kind of gets their own caboose. And uh, we were here with the Hardy group, and so the five of us all got the short caboose. Nice. Move your knees in yeah. the way. So the little short caboose here belongs to Lindsay Ashby. It's a Rio Grande Southern short caboose off that railroad. Love it. And when he left the Georgetown Loop, he brought this caboose along with him and had the friends restore it for him. But what a nifty little thing to have. This was the entrance to the lantern box. There was always a hatch right here. <laughs> And back in the early days, a single lantern could be shoved up in here to signal other trains, and it sat in this little box up on the roof. Not used anymore. They gave up on using those, gee, like in 1880, something oh like that. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
So back in the day, this was sort of the train crew's rear end office. They tried to make them as comfortable as as possible, I guess. Well, no train is complete without a little caboose anyway. Well, they just, they're nifty. I, I really hate to see them gone. Me too. The middle caboose on our train is this little guy here. This is a Denver and Rio Grande Western long caboose. Uh, pretty much the same idea, only a little bit bigger. I suppose it was a little more comfortable for the crews. They even had drinking water. Oh, amenities. Ah, I wouldn't drink out of this thing. <laughs> Yuck. But uh, nevertheless, uh, for the train crews, this was a little more comfortable than the short caboose. These are a little bit more modern. The third caboose wasn't a caboose at all. It's a private car. Look at the interior on that. Yeah, isn't it gorgeous? A guy just built this a few years ago as a private car, but he wanted it to look just like a caboose.
Bubba, we all fly forward, not so bad. Not bad, we did. <laughs> Here we are at Phantom Curve changing crews. The reason we were able to take this ride in the first place is this was actually a student trip. Uh, if you want to pay money, they will run you through their school and teach you. Oh! <laughs> yeah. That was a rough one. When you hear the slack coming in, you know that it's going to be a jolt. Yeah. That was my <laughs> This is our final crew change here at Lava Tank. They're putting the last student crew on who paid money to come and run the train. Driver's ed for trains. Driver's ed for steam locomotives. How fun. But uh, what 
an enjoyable, enjoyable trip we had. Oh, I love this part. Just kick back and watch the scenery go by from our own little caboose on this fabulous narrow gauge railroad being pulled by a steam locomotive. No kidding. Now that is some wonderful screwing around. Absolutely. That was one of the most pleasant days we've had in a long time. Relaxing. Well, it was worth packing up fast and just taking off. Why was it? What a wonderful day. It's so great that there are groups out there like the Friends of the Cumbers and Toltec that can do these kinds of things. Absolutely. I'm uh, putting a link in the description to the Friends website. And if you want to go on one of these rides or just join the group, right. check that out. Well, that was fun. Yes, it was. Oh, wow. What a fun trip to be able to just throw a suitcase in the car and take yeah. off and the next day be riding a caboose. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My dream. Unfortunately, the weather's changing and the seasons sure, are going yes. and I think we won't be doing that anymore. Not for a while. Not for a while. Mm -hmm. So, what a great way to sort of finish off the summer exactly. with an impromptu caboose hop. Isn't that fun? That was, a, that was just a ball. That was well, if uh, you haven't been over to the channel, then you want to pop on over to the channel. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, well, you want to be a subscriber. Be a subscriber. Because subscribing means that you'll be notified. And if you don't know how to notify you, somebody had to show me, because I didn't know, but there's a little bell, and you click on the bell next to your notification thing when you subscribe to a thing, and, and you can say, send me an email or send me a text message or mm -hmm. only notify me when they put up something incredibly cool whatever there's all these different sets. so what you want to have is you want it to text you and email you and phone you with a robo call every time we post anything <laughs> whatever anyway you can control <laughs> the notification system once you're a subscriber but first you have to be a subscriber. And in order to become a subscriber, you have to click on the blue button. Are you ready for it? Zoink! You see right here the blue button that says subscribe? Click on that, takes you to the channel, makes you a subscriber. Unless the button's not there, don't try turning your iPhone 90 degrees up here. Well, <laughs> and it might say zoink. And it might say zoink. <laughs> We're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in a few days with some more significant screwing around. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye-bye.